I am speculating. I would, a lot of the reason I put the, I put carbohydrates in the crosshairs is because of what it does to insulin. I, I, I want to make sure people understand that, that I'm not declaring war on carbohydrates because of the entire macronutrient class. It really is the subsequent question, which is what does it do to insulin? So I appreciate the question because that's how you're framing it. Um, remember with that in mind, insulin's most famous action but far from its only action. And I would even say not even its most important, but insulin's most famous action is to control blood sugar. Now, I emphasize that because a lot of what is wrong in modern clinical care when it comes to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes therapies is that they think it's a glucose problem. It's not. These are insulin problems. And, and if, we look at them as, if we look at them as insulin problems, we address them much more effectively than if we look at them as a glucose problem but that's a little bit of a tangent but even still if we look at if we're asking the question what happens to insulin my question is always or or my my solution is always the longer you spend in a state of low insulin the better for being lean, for um, cognitive health, for cardiometabolic health, all of these reasons uh, longevity, the more insulin is at a kind of basal state overall the better you're going to be so i would actually say it would be, be one bolus up and down would be better especially because you can manage that one dose you know if you have if you know okay lunch is my main carb meal then you're able to couple that with i'm going to eat this bigger carb meal and i'm going to go on a 15 minute walk or it's just so much easier to manage that one moment rather than okay i'm eating some carbs now i'm getting an insulin spike and before it ever comes down i'm eating some more now i'm eating some more but I'm spreading it out more. I think that's actually part of what's gotten to the modern epidemic that we're in with regards to metabolic health. Insulin resistance is the most common health disorder worldwide, which is why I beat that drum so loudly. I, the reason I did my postdoctoral fellowship in far flung but lovely Singapore is because even in the midst of the beautiful islands of Southeast Asia, the actual rate of type two diabetes is higher than we have it in the US in beautiful little Singapore. And as you look around the world, the Middle East, North Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Pacific Islands, even in our own neck of the woods, Mexico has higher rates of diabetes than we do in the US. This is an absolutely global problem. And a lot of it is because about 71% of all calories consumed globally are carbohydrates, often refined. And we've been told to eat five or six times a day. And so you never give your body a chance to lower the insulin because it's going to take a couple hours to do so. And the longer a person is living with elevated insulin, the more that chronically elevated insulin is causing insulin resistance. Elevated insulin is the primary driver of insulin resistance. But then, of course, to the astute listener, they might recall that just moments ago I said that hyperinsulinemia or elevated insulin is also a chronic feature, uh, an inseparable feature of insulin resistance. So you end up creating this vicious cycle where the more frequently you're spiking your insulin, the more you're promoting insulin resistance, then the more insulin you need to control your blood sugar now because insulin isn't working as well, which is further driving insulin resistance. So the solution is to just get off this hyperglycemic roller coaster. But anyway, to bring it full circle back to your question, with some speculation um, noted, I would suspect it's better to just have one bolus. Get that, get that, go starches and sugars in. You've done it, you're done. Now, as rapidly as you can, you wanna bring that insulin back down. Now, I don't even want to sound like insulin is just this uniform villain. We must have it. The absence of insulin is a death sentence. It's just that we live now in a day in time where we're spiking it all the time. And it's just too much of a good thing. Too much insulin is the primary cause of insulin resistance.